From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello. Hello. Hello, what's that? I, I can't quite hear you. This is Johnny Dollar. I'm phoning from a patrol phone, Forest Service, Summit Road. Okay, you're coming through now. Is that Lieutenant Mervyn? Right. I should have known it was you. What are you doing up there in the mountains? Is this a manhunt or a vacation? Relax, Lieutenant. Before you use some words, you'll have to eat. Meeting? Call in your APB. I found that stolen car the Nitsen gang was using. Where? Up here in the Santa Rita Mountains, about a mile from Primrose Camp, Pop Bardell. Yeah, yeah, I know the place. They ran it off a cliff and started a rock slide to bury it. One of them's still in the car, dead, two bullet wounds. You must have hit him when they crashed your roadblock. And that makes two dead. It leaves Chipper Nitsen and one other one still on the loose. All right, Mr. Dollar, I'll have 50 men combing that area within an hour and a half. You will not. I what? There's something wrong at Bardell's place. You bring 50 state troopers in here, you may bust it wide open. Bust what wide open? That's what I'm trying to find out. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Santa Rita National Forest, Southern Arizona. To the home office, Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Primrose Matter. Expense account continued. It took a lot of arguing to get Lieutenant Mervyn of the State Highway Police to hold his men off for 24 hours, but he finally gave in. $100,000. That was the amount of the insured payroll the Nitsen gang had got away with in Kansas City, killing two guards in the process. Later, they shot their way through a roadblock in southern Arizona, left a state trooper and one of the gang dead in the road behind them, and then disappeared. I was certain the answer was at Primrose Camp. Evening, Mr. Bardell. <laughs> Something else you forgot? No, I told you I'd stop on the way back down. Got a vacancy yet on one of those cabins? They're all rented. Oh, that's too bad. I I noticed they're dark, by the way, and there are still no cars parked in front of them. It don't signify. Where do you suppose all your guests are? Lost back in the hills somewhere? Couldn't say. Now, if you... Maybe some of them went down to the highway for the night. I... I could turn the cabin back over to them if they happen to show up. When they're rented, they're rented. Makes no difference if the folks ain't here to use them. Well, that's true, I suppose, technically. But when a traveler's badly in need of a place for the night and you've got cabins standing empty... I told you before, it's better you go on down to the highways. Plenty of motels within a few miles of the junction. Well, that's exactly my trouble, Mr. Bardell. I can't. Why not? Because it's almost dark now and I haven't got any lights. What? Yeah, this is a rented car. I should have tried the headlights before I took it out, but I didn't. Now when I need them, they won't work. See? Uh, it's probably just a fuse blowed. Oh, it might be. Let me turn the flashlight up under the dash here. It won't take but a second to tell. Is that what it is? Nope. Fuses seem to be all right. Broken wire, maybe. Hard to say. Oh, uh, think you might be able to fix it? No, no, it, it's a job for an electrician. I ain't got the equipment to trace it. Hey, is that your station wagon there at the side of the lunchroom? Why, yeah. Well, look, I'd be glad to pay you if you drive me down to where I can no, get some No, 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 I, I can't. I, I can't leave here. Well, maybe your nephew could take me. Huh? The young fellow who was here this afternoon uh, when I came by. No, 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 he, he's not familiar with the road. Oh, he drove down and picked up the mail this morning, didn't he? How'd you know? Jake, down at the barn grill, have to mention it. Just who are you, anyway? Oh, I guess I did forget to introduce myself this afternoon. My name's Johnny Dollar, Mr. I've not done not your name. I mean, what are you up here for? Looking around, prospecting a little, seeing the country. Your nephew did go down for the mail, didn't he? But that was in the daylight. Look, you said you had a sleeping bag with you. It, it, it ain't cold tonight. Why don't you hey, just that's take a good it? idea. I can spread it out right there on the porch in front of your souvenir shop. No, no, I, I don't mean here. Down the road someplace. <laughs> I, I don't quite understand your attitude, Mr. Bardell. I, I've always understood you Westerners were noted for your hospitality. Well, it, it's just that it, it, it makes the missus nervous to, to have strangers around outside. And how am I supposed to get down the road someplace? I, I don't know. On foot, maybe? In the dark? In a strange country? 
Oh, when I tell Jake this, he won't believe it. No. No what? No, don't, don't say anything to Jake. He, he wouldn't understand. Well, neither do I. I can't do anything for you, Mr. Dollar. Just take my word for it now and and, and go on before you cause more trouble. And you what can... trouble, Uncle? What trouble are you talking about? Well, it, it's not trouble exactly. The, the lights is out on his car. He was just wanting me to put him up for the night. You have hard luck, don't you, mister? Hey, Carl looks that way. I told him just like I did this afternoon. We ain't got no place for him. He'll, he'll have to find somewhere. We can take care of him, Uncle, as long as he's that anxious to stay. But you said... I said what? The, the cabins, they're, they're all rented. And it's not likely the people of number two will be back. He can use that one for the night. But, but... You now... better go see if it's in shape, Uncle. Go on. All right. I, I'll go look at it. I'm, uh... Much obliged to you for changing his mind. That's okay. We wouldn't want you to go away and tell bad stories about us, would we? Might cause trouble. Expense account, item seven, five dollars. Payment in advance for one night's rent on cabin number two, Primrose Tourist Camp. The room and the bed were far from inviting, but it didn't matter much. I didn't look for any easy night's rest under the best of circumstances. Not with a feeling of tension and danger that hung over this place. And the almost certain knowledge that two desperate killers were only yards away from me. Mrs. Bardell, Pop's wife, took my payment for the room and made change in the lunchroom next door to the service station. I'll have to give you ones, Mr. Dollar. You've got a five dollar bill. Oh, that's all right. There's two, three, four, and five. Want a receipt? No, no thanks. But I could sure stand something to eat. Well, I could... Cook you up some ham and eggs, I guess. Some coffee, if that'll do you. Sure, sure, fine. Only time I fix any regular meals, aside from short orders, when we got the cabins full. Then they're not full now, I take it, huh? No, not a soul. I, I mean, well, they're rented, of course, but the folks aren't eating here. Oh, I see. You want your eggs sunny side up? Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Must get kind of lonesome for you up here when the season slacks off. I got my man. And my daughter. How old is your daughter, Mrs. Bardell? Jenny was 20, month before last. Oh, well, I imagine she's a big help to you. Yes. She takes care of the souvenir shop on her own. Helps me here in the lunchroom when I get real busy. Yeah, I noticed a clothes sign on the door of the shop. Uh, is your daughter away at the present? No, she's... Um... Uh, she's not feeling well today. She's in her room. Oh, I hope it's nothing serious. No. She'll be all right. She's got to be. Then it is something serious. No. I I, I, I didn't mean it that way. It, it's nothing. Forget it. Well, look, if there's anything I can do... No, nothing. Forget I said anything, Mr. Dollar. You're going to want toast. I know. Bread will be fine. And there you are. Hope that's going to be enough for you. Yeah, plenty. Cream in your coffee? Black, please. Yeah. Ah, this looks great. You're a good cook, Mrs. Bardell. Ham and eggs don't prove nothing. Anybody can fix that. Oh, you'd be surprised. You'll be leaving in the morning, I suppose. Well, I'd like to stay several days, but I don't know whether your husband will let me have a cabin any longer. He can't help himself. He, he just can't help it. Why not? Well, he... The cabins are rented, that's all. When I put my stuff in number two, there was no sign of any other luggage. They, they took it all out. I was right there all the time, Mrs. Bardell. I mean earlier. Mr. Dollar, we're in terrible danger, all of us. You too. What kind of danger? I, I can't tell you. Please, if I talk about it, I'll go all to pieces. You don't know what it's like. I might be able to help you. If no. You... The only way you can help is to forget it, not ask any questions. This place is a powder keg. Don't do anything. Anything to set it off. Please, Mr. Dollar. Item eight, a dollar and ten cents, one order of ham and eggs. Mrs. Bardell refused to say anything more, and I didn't try to force her to. She was shaking, cold sweat on her forehead, scared half to death. I walked out onto the porch, sat down, lit a cigarette, and watched the stars come out one by one, sharp and bright against the black mountain sky. The Barnell's living quarters were back at the souvenir shop, and there were no lights showing in them. If their daughter Jenny was in her room, ill, she was back there in the dark. 
After a while, I went to my cabin. As I fumbled around for a light switch, I suddenly realized somebody was standing in the doorway. Reckon you're gonna have to use an oil lamp tonight, Mr. Dollar. Generator's got a drive belt busted, and I ain't been able to get out to fetch one. Oh, I don't mind, Mr. Barnell. The lamp's there on the table, huh? I'll light it for you now, and you can blow it out when you go to bed. Sure. All right, fine. Uh, you hadn't ought to pay no attention to the missus, what she said a while ago. I didn't realize she'd said anything. Well, she was telling me she spouted off some foolishness. Might be tucked wrong if a man was to pay any mind to it. Uh, if that gets to smoking, you'll have to turn it down some. Okay. Mrs. Bardell did seem a little upset, but she well, didn't... Well, that's say... all it is, Mr. Dollar, just upset. You know how women get sometimes. Just forget it. It's the best thing to do. Anything you need now before I leave you? No, no, nothing I can think of. Thanks anyway. Then I reckon I'll say good night. You can have your breakfast in the morning any time after about 7 o'clock. Jake Meager was telling me you have a daughter, Mr. Bardell. That's right. I, uh... I, I didn't notice her around anywhere this evening. Is she, she, uh... she She's in uh, Tucson for a few days. Oh? Yes, yeah, she's in there visiting friends. Oh, I see. Well, then, you're lucky to have your nephew here to help you while she's away. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it works out real good. He's been here for some time, I suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah, several weeks now. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a lot of help to you. Really takes hold of things. Yeah. Uh... I don't know what I'd do without him. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Mr. Bardell. Yeah? Jake Meager told me your nephew just came yesterday. Jake drinks too much. He's always getting things mixed up. And Mrs. Bardell way. told me a little while ago that your daughter's out back in her room. Ill. Not in Tucson. Well, it's like I was saying. The missus is all upset. She, she just don't rightly know what she's saying. And one more thing. I noticed the front end of my car has been jacked up and the right front wheel's been taken off. The tire went flat. We'll fix it and put it back on in the morning. Good night, Mr. Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a tightening noose, people held fast in the grip of fear. Then, violence. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>